Hello everyone, let's look at a hard lead code problem today. We are given an integer array and two integers min k and max k. A fixed bound subarray is defined as a subarray in which the minimum value is min k and the maximum value is max k. It means that both min k and max k should exist in it and all the elements in the subarray should be in that range and we have to return the number of fixed bound subarrays. Let's look at the example given. Here we have to look at a subarray which contains both 1 and 5 and all the elements in the subarray should be within 1 to 5. Hence the permitted values are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. We can see that there are two such subarrays 1, 3, 5 and 1, 3, 5, 2. Hence the count is 2. If we consider this subarray, then we can see that both 1 and 5 exist in it. But there is also a value 7 which is not permitted, hence this cannot be counted. In the next example, both min k and max k is 1. There can be 4 valid subarrays starting at the 0th index. Similarly, there can be 3 valid subarrays starting at the 1st index and two subarrays starting at the second index. For the last index, there can be only one such subarray. Hence, the total count would be 10. Now let's try to come up with a solution for this. Let's look at this example where the min k is 4 and the max k is 8. Any valid subarray should satisfy this condition. It should have both 4 and 8. There shouldn't be any bad number between it. And all the numbers should satisfy this condition that they are between 4 and 8 inclusive. In the first part of the array represented by yellow, we see that 4 exists in it, but there isn't any 8. In the next part, we could see that both 4 and 8 exist together, and the bad numbers are not between them. And similarly, in the third part, both 4 and 8 exist, and bad numbers are not between them. Now let's count the valid subarrays. We can see that starting at 8, there can be 3 valid subarrays. Similarly, starting at 7, there can be 3 valid subarrays. And similarly, starting at 6, there can be 3 valid subarrays. We can notice that there are 3 valid starting points for our subarrays. And for these ending points, there can be 3 subarrays where the starting point is going to be one of the three points mentioned before. Let's see if we can come up with a formula for the number of starting points. Let's label this as a bad index. And since our subarray must contain both 8 and 4, we have to take the minimum of them for our last starting point. Hence, 8 would be our last starting point. Please note that this is going to be our last starting point and not the first starting point. You can see that we have three valid starting points 6, 7 and 8. Hence the number of starting points is going to be start minus bad. Our subarray is going to be valid only if start is greater than bad. If bad is greater than start, it means that we have not encountered both 4 and 8 after the bad index. Let's note down the three main conditions. The last starting index would be the minimum of index of 4 and index of 8. The number of starting points would be start minus bad. And for a valid subarray, start has to be greater than bad. Let's try to simulate our above example using these conditions. When we are at this index, our start value would be index 1 because we have to take the minimum of index 1 where 4 was found and index 5 where 8 was found. Hence, the condition start is greater than bad would fail. We'll continue in our loop and check the next number. Now our start value will get updated to index 5. 
Hence, we'll have three starting points and thus we'll add three to our answer. And similarly for the next element 6, we'll have three starting points and thus we'll add three to our answer. Similarly for the next element 5, we'll add three to our answer. And now when we encounter 9, which is a bad number, we'll update our bad index. Hence the condition start is greater than bad will not be true. And similarly going forward when we encounter the last element 4, our start would become 8. And now start will be greater than bad by 1. Hence we'll add 1 to our result. The time complexity of this solution would be O of n because we have to traverse the array only once. And the space complexity would be constant. Now let's implement our solution. Let's keep three variables to track the last bad index, last minimum k index and last max k index. Let's initialize all this to minus 1. Let's initialize our result to be 0. We are now looping over the list i will be the index and n will be that element. We'll check if that number is a bad number then we'll update the bad index. We'll check if that number is minimum k then we'll update the minimum k index. Now we'll check if that number is max k then we'll update the max k index. Please note that we have to use two separate if conditions for min k and max k. This is for the use case where both min k and max k are the same. If we had used an else if condition, then in that case max k would always be minus 1. It would be inferred as we have never encountered max k. Hence the result would be 0 in that case. Our variable start would be the minimum of min index and the max index. Now we'll check if start is greater than bad then we'll update our result by the number of starting points. Start minus bad would represent the number of starting points. We can return the result at the end of the loop. Let's submit our solution. As you can see our solution is accepted. If you have any concerns regarding this solution please mention in the comments. If you thought this video was helpful please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.